How are you? Yeah, all good, thanks, mate. Not too bad at all. Yes, great. So you're obviously on the, um, this is my parade tour at the moment. Where yep. are you tonight? Barnsley, first time Barnsley. here for us. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So tour seems to be going incredibly well so far. How's it been for you? Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, I'm really happy to see so many people turning out, really, you know, considering it's a, a January and cost of living and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just been amazing. And it's just been, it just feels like everyone's having such a good time like with us. Uh, so, it's, yeah, it's just been great to get out and see everyone. Yeah. yeah. We are, I was at Ferris and Edmonds on, uh, on Thursday night, and that was such a, a great gig, such a, a lovely venue. But it's just a, a warm response to you guys. Yeah, yeah. First time <clears throat> there for us. Um, yeah, what a place! Like the venue's outstanding. Yeah. Uh, I sent pictures online, so we we were expecting it it to be good. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, very very uh, special place that one. Yeah. As I say, it was you know things have been sort of really flowing. On this tour, um, the new lineup seems to be working <clears throat> really, really well. Obviously, the last time I saw you guys, you had Kelpie on bass, yeah. But now, obviously, you've, you've had the change to, to Fraser. Um, was that a big adjustment for you guys? Because I know there was such a tight unit, yeah. I mean, um, obviously, you know, Fre uh, Kelpie was you know such an important part of the family, and um, you know. We we knew that he hadn't been happy in the UK for a while, and we kind of knew the only reason he was staying around um, was the band. Um, <clears throat> he did a bit of travelling when we had a bit of uh, downtime, uh, like September October time last year, and then we actually got a last minute festival come in to finish up Rava Blues Festival in Poland. It's like a big arena gig. I, I did it a few years ago. Absolutely amazing place. Um, one of the American acts couldn't make it over, so we ended up filling in. Um, but Kelpie was actually away in Hawaii at the time, travelling. Uh, so we knew Fraser locally, played with Josiah and the band and a few other like uh, function band type things, and knew he was an amazing player. Got him involved, and my expectations was just like get someone that we knew could play well yeah. and get through yeah. the gig. I wasn't expecting you know them to be Kelpie on the gig. Uh, you know, someone putting on a great performance because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big act to step in on a yeah, big yeah, short yeah. note, yeah. one quick rehearsal, you know. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. He was amazing. He was charging all over the stage like he'd been playing with us for years. And, you know, and I, I kind of had it in the back of my head, like, well, if Kelpie ever does leave, this guy's like the perfect replacement. Like, you literally couldn't find anyone like more perfect. And then, um, you know, a couple of months later, no, probably wasn't even that. I can't remember when it was, I know, like December time, maybe no end of November, December kind of time. Uh, Kelpie let us know that he was going to be leaving the UK and, and therefore have to leave the band. Um, you know, it was obviously very, very sad, but we knew Fraser would be the the perfect replacement. So, um, you know, I got, got straight on the phone and yeah, got, got it done. And uh, yeah, he's been unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Um, as you saw yourself the other night, you know, it's like like we've all been playing to go for years. So uh, yeah, yeah, very very fortunate. Yeah, it's, there seems such a, a great vibe on stage, and I think I see I've seen you so many times over the years, from you know, pub gigs through to when you opened for Beth Hart at uh, oh. Hammersmith doing the acoustic set, download. So it's been a variety of stages, and I've I've seen you as an artist really grow as well i think the music has as well you know from you start off more more in the in the blues southern rock and you know people say sort of country you know elements in there but now obviously the the music's a lot harder you know yep. and, you know sort of you know rockier how has that been as far as a progression for yourself well it's been completely natural for me that's just the way it's happened um you know, I never really wanted to be confined to just the blues genre. I'm a massive blues fan. <clears throat> I never really considered myself a blues artist because there's just a lot more to me than that. 
you know blue yeah. like me playing blue stuff is just one small part of me as a musician you know my teens i used to play in metal bands you know i've played yeah. in jazz bands I've, I've done lots of different styles of stuff um so like me as a, a musician and a, as an artist i don't really like to be pigeonholed as oh he's a blues guy because i'm yeah, really yeah. not i can play blues and i love blues and maybe some of the songs that i've written in the past have a blues element to it but i'm just just a, a guitar player singer and you know i I'd, I'd, I'd just apply a blanket rock term <laughs> like yeah. over it if, if yeah really yeah put, yeah put a label to something that's just like what it is you know one of my favorite artists you know someone um who i've loved like since i was a kid and actually i've, I've, I've got to know and hang out with uh is richie Cotson. and you listen to right. his yeah, back yeah. a lot you know started off playing like poison and then got to mr big and then, like his own stuff like he'll have like an instrumental guitar album then have, like a jazz fusion thing or like greg howe then he'll have like a heavy album then they have like funky album then he has a bluesy album then he's got like another heavy album he's got the winery dogs and obviously i'm nowhere near as talented as that guy um <clears throat> but you know he's he's just a, a musician and an artist and you know likes playing lots of different styles and i, I guess i'm kind of you know the same in that sense whilst just not being quite as good <laughs> yeah well, you know you're exploring aren't you you know you're you're an artist you're being creative you know you're using your skills and talents and you're refining them and just as you say bringing in these other elements and not being sort of pigeonholed which is as i guess you know the the, the great thing that that most artists try for yeah and do you know I, I think you know i'm sure we've lost some people on the way but I reckon probably they were people that were on the fringe anyway, you know, like traditional blues people have never been into what I do anyway. Um, it's not, not I've never been the 12 bar blues kind of guy. Um, so all the kind of stuff I've seen has just been like super positive and, you know, not just online, but in the numbers as well. Our last album was by far our most successful album yeah. sales guy, you know, got the UK. Uh, top 30 um, and number 27 charts of like the proper charts. Um, you know, in the tour numbers, every tour it's going up, we're selling more and more tickets. So it's obviously, people are obviously resonating with it. Mm. You know, they're obviously, it's not like a, a jarring thing. I think if you yeah, don't know yeah. who I am, like listen to a song off Lucky 13, then listen to a song off Death Valley Paradise, maybe it will seem a little bit weird. But um I think most of the new people that are discovering us are discovering us through Death Valley Paradise. And I think a lot of my older fans that discovered me in the early days have actually enjoyed the process of it, you know, of where it's been going. That's kind of the impression I've been getting. Yeah. So I said in my in my review, there seems to be such a wide variety of people at your gigs. You know, you had, you know, traditional blues fans next to metalheads and the and the and the age range was quite wide as well which was which was great to see yeah and you know that's something that's only happened since we've started getting heavier um we've been getting the younger people come in and you know it's wicked like you'll look around and see you know younger people that but like you know there's slayer t-shirts and there's <laughs> you know creepy yeah. t-shirts the shine down t-shirts and it's like alter bridge you know, and I'm seeing this kind of element um, rather than just, you know, BB King T-shirts and, and Fender T-shirts, you know. Um, I, I, I think our tour with Blackstone Cherry helped a lot. Mm. If you look at their audience, um, that's quite a wide range. You've got everything from younger kids that are into, like, heavier stuff, you know, maybe kind of Kerrang! Metal Hammer type kids, um, you know, late teens, early 20s um right the way up to like old older rock fans you know that remember when they saw led zeppelin in 1972 or whatever you know yeah yeah um yeah, yeah. like that real wide range of people and, and i think it feels like we're kind of hitting on the the same kind of thing on a on a smaller scale um yeah it's great it's it's really really good it, for me i think you know, I'm, I'm quite keen to get more you know, like younger people through the door because, um, you know, it's a bit 
close to my age and if I want to have uh, any longevity in my career, <laughs> then we just like, grow up together, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, saying that, I think I'm probably put into the older person's category now. So. <laughs> but, you know, I'm you're... Not you're as, as a yeah. young, young person anymore, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Your download set last year was so incredibly well appreciated. I know I, we, I spoke to you very briefly in the press tent afterwards. And you were, you know, blown away by the reception. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously that was the first, you know, big, proper, like, you know, festival in the rock world. Obviously done like Rambling Man, like, but Rambling Man was known for its southern rock and its blues as much as it was for its rock. You know, mm. download, which is rock and metal. But to step into that world, um, you know, I think probably Andy Coppin took a bit of a punt on us um and you know it, yeah it was just amazing like we had such a big crowd i think we, we had a very good slot um nice like mid-afternoon slot and um yeah the field was packed and it was good you know so many people who have been coming to this tour or co are coming to this tour constantly see people like saw you at download we're coming to this tour and um that's great it's great you yeah. know it's hard to yeah. you never really you know when you're on stage and you look out you know, uh, you know, if you haven't got lights in your face, uh, when in which case you can barely see anything anyway. But you know, it's just kind of like a, it's a bunch of, you know, a big festival. It's just a bunch of heads, isn't it? You know, it's just see yeah, yeah. like a pins. You know, it's hard to appreciate sometimes. Like you don't always. It's sometimes it's hard to tell like how well it's going down or or how how you know what it's actually going to do for the bands. You know, because it's hard to quantify. In uh, you know when it's something that big, yeah. I, I I personally feel you know how does it spread out to like future things? You know, are these people that are going to buy records, buy tickets to watch us uh, on a headline tour? Um, so it's nice when you get that kind of feedback where people are like we saw you at download, we bought tickets, and like that's that's cool for me. That knows we kind of makes us know like we did our job, you know. Yeah, yeah. With your obviously with your with the past career as an MMA fighter. Um, do you think that gives you an extra boost of confidence when you walk out on these huge stages and see these huge crowds, or is there is there still a lot of nerves associated with that? Um, yeah, I mean, people always ask me about the connection between the two. Um, you know, I think I'm not I'm not so sure. I mean, there's definitely I get like a similar feeling before gigs as I would have before a fight and that's just adrenaline you know yeah um which a lot of people you know they don't understand how their body works or they're not used to experience that kind of thing they call it nerves um but you know in the fight game you got to learn to not let that stuff bother you because you know flight or f uh, fight or flight response um, you know, I've seen it with a lot of people I've coached. They'll be an absolute monster in the gym. And then when it comes to the fight, they just completely freeze up because, yeah, yeah. you know, they haven't been able to deal with that kind of adrenaline surge and they've got all, you know. Um, so I've had years of getting used to that. So I definitely get like a little feeling, definitely like half an hour before. It's like, right, here we go. And it's similar to the fight game in the sense like I'd spend a lot of the day before a fight feeling like, oh, I'm not ready for this. I don't feel like I want to fight tonight. Like you, you know, it's just like this kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd start the warm up, and then bam, I'm like ready to go. It's a similar yeah. thing with like uh, with a band. You know, I have some days I'm like tired. I'm like, oh, I just I, I'm not feeling it tonight. I just don't know how I'm gonna do it. And then all of a sudden, I start my warm up routine. I'm like, right, absolutely buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Some similarities yeah. that, but, you know, like yeah. nerves. I'm, I've always kind of been a performer, I suppose, you know, from yeah. doing school plays <laughs> up to, <laughs> doing, you know, gigs and bands. I, I tend yeah. to not, you know, yeah, I, 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 nothing really phases me like that. Yeah, good. It's because you know, I was talking to, um, I was interviewing uh, Blackstone Cherry, I mean, as mentioned, um, and uh, also Mark Tremonti last year. And of course, they, they oh, both cool. played the Albert Hall. And obviously, you played the Albert Hall. Now, that must have been some sort of occasion just stepping out on that stage with the history there. Were, were you very aware of of being oh, in that particular venue? Yeah, I mean, 
like you said, I mean, it's, it's just the history. You know, is there a more iconic venue that you can play in the UK? Probably not. Um, is there a more iconic venue you can play in the world? I mean, yeah. who knows? It's, 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 it is one of those places. I know, like, so we opened up for Blackstone Cherry, and I know they they were very insistent that we've got to play the hall. Like, you know, I remember speaking yeah. to Chris about yeah. it, and he was like, look, we've got to play the hall. Like, on this next tour, that's what I want to do. We want to do a DVD. And, you know, it was a dream, like, for him. You know, and you think, like, the stuff Blackstone Cherry do, it's still a dream for them to do... Uh, yeah. Albert Hall. So yeah, for us to piggy on piggyback on that one, join them for that was it was nuts. We had a little moment actually in soundcheck. Um and I remember just looking at Josiah, the guitar player, and being like, What are we doing here? This is just crazy. Because it's such a I think it's because the ceiling's so high, it just feels vast. Like I've played yeah, Wembley Arena. Yeah. Um, you know, which is a much bigger place in terms of capacity and but mm. footprint, I suppose. Um, but when you're in the hour, oh, I don't know. It's just, I suppose, like the people at the back aren't actually that far away from you. Yeah. yeah. But it's just the fact it's just so vast that you just feel almost like vulnerable. I remember in soundtrack stand there feeling like, I like this is this is nuts. I haven't felt like that in a in a long long time, if ever that I really remember. Um, so yeah, that was. That was pretty cool. But when once the gig rolled around, um, it was great. I think we had quite a lot of uh, our fans. You know, I think there's quite a big crossover between KBV fans and Blackstone Cherry fans. So yeah, I know yeah. we definitely had people in the crowd that knew who we were and knew our songs and were singing along. And um, yeah, it just felt amazing. Yeah, yeah. I just think it, you're. Um, I, I know. One of the highlights for me personally of, of Thursday's gig was watching over me and just how incredibly, incredibly personal that is to you. And it's such a wonderful, moving tribute to your dad. And I, I can just imagine that him being so proud of you, you know, you know walking out on the stage of the Albert Hall. He must yeah. have been a, a huge, huge influence on your life. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, he was a great, great guy. Um, and you know, it's a shame, you know, he never got to see it. He would have loved it. He'd have been my number one fan. But that, I, you know, I often look back and I think, you know, would I have done this if he was still alive? You know, because I do feel like his death changed, changed a lot of things, changed, you know, yeah. well, I was 26, 27, like when he died. Um, you know, still finding my feet in the world and just changes the way you see things when when you experience mm. something like that. And you know, when I eventually got around to wanting to write some songs and to do a band again, you know, I was very much doing it with with his memory in mind and almost like uh not like doing it for him, I was doing it for myself, but you know, but a little bit of that you know yeah, kind of yeah. like in the back of my mind um so i often wonder you know if i didn't have that catalyst obviously i wouldn't wish my dad dead but what i'm saying is you know if he was alive i might not have ended up going down this path you know i was yeah. playing in a cover yeah. band with him and i was comfortable just doing cover band stuff alongside yeah, yeah. the fighting thing maybe my life would have carried along that that same path but you know experiencing his death made me question everything made me look at everything and made me view the world differently and made me make decisions differently so maybe i wouldn't have ever done this if you stuck around so yeah yeah so i no. said yeah so the new album obviously is well, new issue you know sort of from last year brilliant yep. no, really it's loved it but there's it's such an incredibly personal it's probably your most personal yet again you know some of the highlights for me on on mm -hmm. thursday was you know wake me when it's over um because that, that i think that just keys into how so many of us felt chaos i know is is very personal to you with um with the struggles you were having at one point and then my yep. parade which i i said in, in that review that, you know it was it's a really a war song it's a declaration it's it's a standing there and and you know 
you know, you're with us or or you're against us sort of song. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. How 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 did you feel about the whole writing process of the album? Yeah, I mean, it was. Um, I mean, it was kind of. It was probably the only positive thing to come out of the pandemic for me personally was that I actually had time to sit down and write songs mm. and teamed up with a few different songwriters in the states. Something that I'd never done before co-writing like that and that was a great experience for me i think they really helped bring out the best of me and put me on some different paths um so that 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 was that was great so yeah i mean i really spent a lot of time working on the songs rewriting rewriting again really like honing the sound and um i probably wouldn't have had the time to do that if it wasn't for the pandemic so it's the one positive thing that I can take away from it all, really. Yeah. You, you're you you're always incredibly busy anyway, I think, because of you. Do you still play with um, Supersonic Blues Machine? Yeah, when, when, when there's shows, um, it's a very, very difficult band to organise. Obviously, they're based in the States, yeah. but they do most of the stuff um, in Europe. Um, you know, obviously, we have... People like Billy Gibbons guesting with us, but he's yeah. so busy with ZZ Top and his own stuff as well. It's just it's like there's a it's a logistical uh, nightmare that band. Like yeah, Fabrizio yeah. that runs it, like he works so hard trying to pull things off, and you know it is tricky. Um, we've got a few things coming this year uh, out in the mainland. Um, possibly, maybe they might try to sort something for the UK, but. Um, nothing's been announced or confirmed yet. So, yeah, hopefully we'll manage to get like a little bit of a tour in uh, yeah. in the summer, which would be nice. Yeah. Of course, you've been working with my uh, with my friends just down the road, the Hot One Two as well. I bumped into Kev. Uh, oh right, cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've known Kev for years, and uh, he was there with his wife and his his two boys, and they had a great time. And uh, so you've been doing video with them, haven't you? Yeah, sure. Um, Two music videos for them so yeah that's kind of what i've been doing it's a sideline thing when i'm not touring and uh yeah so back before christmas i shot a couple of videos up with them um it's really good great bunch of guys hard working yeah um and we've come up with some good stuff so i'm not sure when they're <laughs> releasing but um i'll finish my part anyway so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they come out yeah so plans for the future how do you do you plan much far in advance or is it just taking things you know sort of a few months at a time excuse me um yeah i think at the moment we're kind of in the stage where we're writing so we're writing now literally on the tour bus just and i've got in this top lounge here we've set up a little uh let see if i'll show you all right i'll flip the camera on this i don't know if i can yeah We've set up like a little recording station oh, nice. yeah. up here. So we've been been recording, uh, getting some demos, a bit of writing done. Um, for us, I think the main thing is that we kind of had to get this get this tour done. I mean, that makes it sound like it's a chore. It's not a chore at all. But it was kind of the focus has just been on doing this tour. Yeah. We've got a bunch of festivals booked in for the summer that we're headlining. Off the back of this tour, and you know how well this this tour has done will kind of dictate what we do next the next moves and what promoters want to do and stuff so it's kind of getting this done looking to the summer festivals that we're we're headlining um and then uh yeah so pretty much once this tour is done i think we're going to start firming up some plans a bit further down the line maybe for like early next year and whatever excellent well so with all your plans, you know, with the, with the current tour, I wish you all well. I say it was great seeing you, and great seeing Dia Matrona as well. Great, great band. I saw them uh, last year in Belfast, Homecoming. Oh, cool. Excellent. I love the way they sort of swap instruments and everything. It's just always there. Yeah, I haven't great... managed to watch anything because it's obviously like, yeah. it's a bit awkward with, obviously they were on like just before us, so I'm either getting ready or I can't actually go and stand in the crowd or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've caught a few bits from the soundtrack and stuff, and they sound uh, really, really good. Yeah, yeah, do catch them. But yeah, it was great seeing you come out in the crowd, and you spent so much time in the crowd. 
on, 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 on <laughs> so, a, a new yeah, thing you can't possibly do like, everyone yeah um yeah i just you know for me i really want to elevate like the show yeah. on this tour i want us to really you know deliver a good quality show and Obviously, I'm a front man, but I'm a guitar playing front man, so I'm very, very limited in what I can do, like yeah. stuck behind a mic stand a lot of the time, unless I've got guitar solos. Um, so, yeah, we made, made the decision to kind of do some, you know, some stuff where I'm not actually playing guitar, but I'm just on the mic. Um, yeah. And wasn't sure like how it was going to go down, if people think it was a bit weird or, or whatever, but um, it's it's gone down really, really well, and it, it seems to be kind of like maybe something that was just missing from the live shows before and maybe it probably wouldn't have worked on like previous album songs, but I think on the new album, it, you know, the, the rockier stuff, it kind of having someone strut around with a microphone kind of works a bit better. I don't know, but um, yeah, it's been good. I've been enjoying getting out there and seeing people's faces up, up close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was great. So again, yeah, I hope all goes well with the rest of the tour. Cheers, uh, enjoy your enjoy your time. See you down the road. I might pop along to Norwich and see you guys again. But uh, oh, cool! Certainly, you know, we'll see you before the end of the year. And thank you so much for your time. I know you've got a a busy schedule. Appreciate it. No worries. Cheers, mate. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay. Cheers, Chris. See you again. Cheers.